news desk. You're welcome. My name is Kemeni Nyamani. I'm on. Let's get into our first matter of the day. The Senior Staff Association of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital uh, has expressed shock at the reappointment of the dismissed acting chief executive officer of the hospital. The newly sworn in health minister, Dr. Kweku Ajemai Mensa, on Tuesday overturned an earlier order by his predecessor, Shariaiti, for Reverend Albert Okuti Boche to step down. Dr. Ajemai is a let in a letter addressed to the board chair of the hospital, Eddie Annan, uh, asked the board to suspend the implementation of Miss Aite's directive. Well, I hear the phone lines now and speak to Charles Ni Kwade Ofe Palm. And um, hello, Charles. I think we've lost Charles there, but uh, we'll, we'll put in efforts. We'll put in efforts and then speak with Charles over the telephone in a bit. But today, um, it, the, the conversation mainly on news today will be around uh, Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Ghana's biggest referral hospital. First, we'll start off with the reappointment of Reverend Okoti Boche. I understand Charles is back over the, the, the telephone. Charles is president of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital Senior Staff Association. Thank you very much, Charles, for your time. Thank you very much, and good morning uh, to all. Good morning to you, too. Why are you unhappy? Oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not happy because of the news that we've heard, the mm. signals that we've faked. Mm. And I'm quite surprised for us to hear that, too. Because the day before, the minister had met me, yes, he had requested for a cruise. I have met the executive, we are sent to the cruise. And all we hear was that after I've given him my word of honor, mm. he, we just heard that he has a letter, uh, two hours later, I heard that a letter has come mm. uh, indicating that he, he is reversing or put it back to his I see. As, uh, as his what, what was this word of honor the minister gave you, the new minister that is? Oh, he said that because he has just been appointed a sector minister. He thought it wise that during his first week, it was good to have peace in Kolebu. Mm. You remember that staff had indicated that the directive from the former minister was not being adhered to. And for that matter, the, the directive was that the current CEO, the DC, the board chairman, should write to, to, to step down as a CEO and appoint Dr. Samuel Siama. So we have been waiting patiently for almost a week, and we said in two weeks' time, in, 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 in two weeks' time, if we didn't see that happening, then we are going to invoke what we call the People's Power or the Public Disobedience Act. I mean, where we we'll take the offices and make sure that it doesn't come to the office. Mm. So he assured me that, because that was later for tomorrow, 24th, and he, he, he had indicated that he wanted a peace and wanted a peaceful atmosphere in Kolebu, so that in his assumption of office, he can then look at the matters of Kolebu. And instead that within a week's time, Gavi has gotten directly from his excellent Mahama, President Mahama, that within a week's time, Kolobu is going to appoint the new CEO, and the issues that we've raised will not go until the, including the dissolution of the board, exercise. So I, I, I told him that I don't work alone, I work with an uh, executive, and uh, they bought the idea. So when I made like, a sit back, that we got the uh, information that a letter has been written. And we, I personally found that to be disturbing and, and surprising, and that they are not being good fit. I don't want to use I don't want to say much, but I still want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I want to call him to his west. That mm. in a week time, he honor what he has well, done. May, just honor. maybe, Charles, just maybe, the minister changed his mind. Would that be such a bad idea? Oh, then he didn't act in good faith. That's what I can say. Because if you are dealing with a Leon leader, you know, you can call me around midnight, 12, 8 o'clock, you will have a discussion because of pending issues at stake. Mm. You start to be very urgent. And I can tell you that. So you needed to have that kind of thing at the back of your mind that you are talking to somebody, you've offered a truth. See, there must be words of honor. Words of honor, you say something, you follow it. It's not just that you are a politician, so you have to tell lies, or you have to say something, you don't have to follow it because it's you. No, we are dealing with a situation. A situation that requires and, and, and so, a cooperation among people. Mm. So if you come to offer you that cooperation, you have all accepted. Why is that? Notwithstanding that, I am saying that it's just one week. All I'm telling my people in Kolobu to exercise this trade, and let's wait to Tuesday. Tuesday was only one week to honor his word. Now, after Tuesday, if that doesn't, that doesn't happen, if everything that happens in Kolobu, we are putting stone at the doorstep of the Minister of Health. It's pure. Because he's bringing chaos. 
we all we all know in Ghana what happened. But wouldn't that be wouldn't that be uh, wrong? Because then he's no the, the 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 earlier decision has been stayed. It means that he's no longer on the table so, as a, a former uh, Charles Charles Lamy land, so that I, I can I can hear you. Yes. So, okay. so what I'm saying is that uh, do, taking that action after Tuesday, if uh, the minister decides that Reverend Okoti should continue as CEO of Kolebu, you, you would then be taking matters into your own hand. In fact, you'll be acting I against the law. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I said that. Mm. He gave his word. His word was that he had instructions from Excellency President Mahama. Mm. One week. His Excellency is going to appoint a new chief executive, a substantive chief executive. And that we should hold on to the truth. And that within that one week, they will be announced and there will be peace in Kolebu. We agree to that. So what he did, is he trying to tell me that, is it only President Mahama who them to do that? I think he has to come out clear. What I'm also saying is that we have cause and effect. Charles, Charles, wait. Wait, just before you talk about the cause and effect, you're telling us mm -hmm. that uh, the new health minister, yes. Dr. Kwaji Mamensa, yes. had told you that yes. he, he, he had been uh, instructed by the president that a new CEO be appointed in a week's time. That's what he told you on Monday. Yes. I see. And then now you hear that uh, Reverend Okoti Botre has been reappointed as CEO. Yes. Uh, is, is it not the same thing? No, no, no it's not the same thing. Uh, uh, the first of all, you, say, you, are, you are even contradicting yourself. Sorry to say that. You said that the letter that was written by the minister mm. was expected. In other words, what does it mean? The, 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 the minister should have known that in the corner to the Act 525, Robert who is a board member, shouldn't be a CEO. Mm. Is it Why do we have to still argue on the same thing? Is it, do you want to believe that the former minister acted wrongly? Are we, is that what we are saying? You know, as all you see, what somebody believes or thinks that he is above the law and he takes instructions from who he wants to believe. You know what is happening in Ghana? Mm. Right. Because the minister instructed that that should be done. It was never done. It took two weeks. It was never done. Mm. And all of a sudden, one crime that he said, Look, I'm reverting. Mm. Now, you want to you start petitioning the President's Excellency. We issue, we, we mention things about mismanagement, corruption, and we never get so many things with evidence. Now look at the letter that has come. The letter is rather saying that the same people you've leveled against them are now refused and get this over you. Is that the way forward? Mm. I see. A a and then you talked about cause and effect. Cause, cause and effect, uh, explain. Oh, no, say, there was a problem. Mm. We were going to do something. You offered this. And now you are saying that uh, within one week you are going to do something. Now, if you don't do the cause effect, it means that you've created chaos. You see, there are a lot of agitation now. We are asking ask our people to have exercise restraint. Now, who, who caused that chaos? It's the honorable minister. He wrote the letter. And that has brought the chaos. Now, the chaos has come because uh, there was an other writing that has said the contrary. So, by you writing that letter, you are presenting a bigger problem. That's what I'm trying to say. But I've told people to exercise restraint. He called me to his house and he told me that I uh, wish time things would change. So, they should hold on. Let's see. That, mm. that's that's that from his happy. That's the word of honor. I see. And you are seeing good faith. You are dealing with, with a, a union leader. Do you want me to my people to see me as as a uh, uh, being the bad light with my people? I see. So you and, take your word. I gave you my word. Mm. Then we and, so, and so tell me something. What, yes. Charles, what, what is your association's interpretation of all this? I mean, on Monday, you were told that there's going to be uh, a new CEO in a week's time. Then we hear that uh, Reverend Okoti Boche's sacking has been overturned. He's been maintained as CEO of, of the hospital. What's been your interpretation into all of the, these things that you, you keep hearing? I don't know how to interpret, but it's, it's very sad what is going on. You ask yourself what is going on. You understand? So as a policy, what is the way, the policy direction of the Ministry of Health? What is the policy direction of the current government? In line with the Constitution, what is the policy direction? We all know that nobody is above the law. We are all governed by the Constitution of this country. There are rules and regulations that are established to control each and every person that works in that, uh, where he or she finds himself. herself. So if there is a Kolebu, there is a law that says that don't use IDF to do that. Don't pay yourself that. Don't do that. And you are doing it. 
And the minister in the premier, the president, made it clear that there was no transparency. Mm. There was no respect for the rule of law. Although he mentioned it. Mm. You think that people didn't know what she was saying? And all of a sudden, somebody has come and he has sent a letter saying that that was wrong. That is wrong. That is not the said, but, but, but tell me something. Should yes. Reverend Okoti be maintained as CEO of Kolibu? Yes. Would that be but, such a bad idea? Would that affect working relationships yes. in, within the hospital? Problem. Mm. Is the, first of all, we must respect the act. The act says that he cannot be. Secondly, we've mentioned things in the petition that says that he can't be the CEO. I don't want to go and list the same things again. Mm. It's not as bad as when you work at a certain place. There are so many things. It's lack of intimidation, harassment, and victimization of staff. It's not in accordance with the working good condition of staff in the hospital. We mention it all the time. Mm. Why should I go and tarnish his name? What do I have against him? I'm just saying that this is a concern of members working in the hospital. Tell somebody here then for once. We must be heard. We we are technocrats in the system. Right, so are... if, if these are things that are documented and we know we shouldn't do, why do you think they would want to maintain Reverend Okpoti as CEO? Oh, that's why you need to follow from the new minister. Mm, but I, you haven't I, thought about it. Pardon? You, 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 it hasn't crossed your mind. I mean, these are things we should all know. Why should we want to maintain him as CEO yes. of the hospital? You know, you know it's fine now with that. It's what got all this. It's a petition. What, what did we write in the petition? What did we say in the petition? Have, have they replied our petition? Now, you realize something that is very, very controversial, and that's very, very, very funny. Let me say it, for example. You remember that all the sector ministers, former sector ministers, were not on them. One of them that says that that had stated that uh, 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 Diana had requested that some staff should proceed on leave, so that all this should be done. That one, the minister said it to me, and he's using that one and has asked staff to proceed on leave. Meanwhile, he has refused to honor the other directives. So, what do you think about that? Is it a case of victimization? Is it a collective justice or double standard? Why didn't you honor the other letters the honorable minister wrote? But you chose the one that you intensely convinced us and told us that AAD associates said certain people must leave before they come and do for us all this. Which that is not true. And those people have been asked to proceed on leave. But you quoted the honorable minister that she said she, you should ask those people to proceed on leave. We were the other diet, you did not follow. Mm. From a deal, why did that? Mm. So I said, because this is about the law. I said, what is going on? That's what we want to know. Mm. But s since you heard this ma matter, though, the fact that Reverend Okoti is going to stay in office, have you contacted the health minister? But, can I, can I come out again? I'm asking if, if you've had any conversation since you, we heard about the reinstatement of uh, Reverend Okoti as CEO of the hospital. Have you had any conversation with the health minister since, since oh, then? Again, I've been in your house almost 10 p.m. I've been offered truce. I accept all your truce. Only for some I have convinced my people that I get this letter. You don't even call me. What, I, you thank me for having brought in the truth. Now, you thank me for having brought peace to Kolebu. And now look at what you are doing again. Mm. The same we brought the problem. You are bringing it back again. I what see. About? I see. So we, 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 we are talking okay, word of honor. But I want mm. to give you an chance. I'm saying that it's, it's one week. Mm. Let's see within one week. Maybe government will appoint a new substantive CEO mm. and dissolve the board. And all this we are saying will I not see. happen. But and, 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 and one week is is next Tuesday. Yes, sir. Hey, sorry, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's fine. Right. Thank you very much, Charles. Charles Ni Kwade Ofe Palm is president of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital Senior Staff Association. Obviously, I'm happy about uh, the turn of things at the hospital. We understand that new uh, health minister, Dr. Kweku Ajiman, uh, Ajiman Mensa, has overturned the decision to uh, send away Reverend Okoti Boche as um, CEO of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. But the Kolibu Teaching Hospital is still here with us. Uh, it's, it's still big matter on the table. This time it has to do with an audit report. An interim forensic audit report actually cited by Joy News indicates the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in 2013 was deprived of 140,776.30 Ghana cities meant for development projects. The audit, which covers the period between January 2012 and December 2013, was in response to allegations and reports of misappropriation of funds at Kolibu. And, and you know, Kolibu is Ghana's biggest uh, referral hospital. But Director of 
pharmacy at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Elizabeth Bruce, who spoke uh, with myself on the AM show, said, the report is false, exaggerated, as auditors have failed to input reports provided them by the pharmacy. Elizabeth Bruce, al Bruce also lamented uh, the pharmacy, which is the cash cow of the hospital, generating over 2 million cities annually, has been cash starved for many, many years. Yes, there is an interim audit report, but I must state clearly here now that it's an interim report. I must also say the internal auditor has not been professional with his work. For almost 30 years that I've worked, mm. I've been audited. I've not complained because it's one of the mm. uh, exercises that one has to go through being in the and, position and so that I am. why do you say this particular auditor has been unprofessional? He has been unprofessional because, one, you presented observations of your work to us mm. to give you responses. Normally, when you present observations, you take our responses and you come back to us. Mm. So, for example, if you state that uh, some assets are missing and I give you a, a response that mm. the assets are really there, I'm supposed to produce the assets. Mm. So you need to come back to me to check whether what I'm saying is true or not. Mm. That is the state or the stage that we are with this report. Okay. And so for them to give such a report, which is not final, out well, to the public, mm. is very, very alarming. Because l l Let me just say, this was a report that was cited. It may not necessarily mean that uh, the auditor gave it off. But let's look at the matters in this interim yes. report. All right, we, madam. As a country, tw uh, in 2013, yes. uh, we were short exchange 140,776.30. Is this true? It is not true. How so? It is not true because they are interpreting the documents they have. Mm. They haven't come to us for an explanation on it. Mm. Because there is an explanation for that shortfall. Mm. We buy drugs from two sources. Mm. We buy from direct from the distributors. Okay. And there is a document called store receipt advice that we attach to every payment. Mm. And then we also, this special unit they are talking about, also takes drugs from the uh, hospital stores. Mm. And that one, there's no store receipt advice issued on it. So if you use stores receipt advice to just compare with your purchases, mm. you think that some excess stock has come from somewhere. And that is what has been computed to be that difference which they cannot account for. So mm. if they had taken a little time mm. for us to sit down, mm. they would have had the explanation for this. There is no short changing, short changing anywhere. In anywhere. So which documents uh, are you going to make available to the auditors now to properly b balance the sheets? We don't. We have the mm. issue vouchers from the stores okay. that we need to sit with them mm. and then we calculate how mm. many items. All the items that they sampled mm. are items that were taken from stores. Mm. And anyway, even if it's not that, we need to sit with them and know exactly where they took that uh, information from. Because as at the time they gave us this document, they hadn't given us the appendices for us to even check with them. Mm. So it is, I think it's mischievous to just conclude that that amount has been uh, misappropriated. Mm. Mm. Beyond that, they yes. have also uh, in that report, yes. the observation was made that uh, only 65,600 out of total of 194,535 purchases made at the pharmacy was accounted for. Your reaction to that? It is very, very simple. Mm. They are using the software to arrive at this information. Mm. They have gone into the software and they've seen this purchase there. Mm. They only went to purchase activity and they've seen one item there. Mm. When we saw it, we told them that you need the history of the individual items as well to check it. We haven't done that. What difference would that make, getting the history of the items? The history tells you which uh, items have come in. Mm. So you will see, and we have given them copies of those documents. Mm. We need to sit and discuss them.
You see, you need to understand the operation of that software before you understand it. Would, working on it alone and mm. looking at an, uh, an activity trail may mm. not give you the whole picture. Mm. And that is what they have done. B but if we have 190 5,000 plus mm. purchases made mm. and it's put into the software and yet uh, we realize that at the end of the day it was just 65,000. How should that be different from... No, it is not like that. Mm. It is not like I that. I'm trying to understand where you're coming yes. from. Um, what I'm saying is mm. you have the software, okay. you input, so they have got the report that you have received. Mm. The receiving is there. Mm. The receiving was received at 194,535. Mm. It is there mm. as a purchase receipt. You, do you get me? Mm. Then you have the history. There are two items. There are just two items that mm. were received. Mm. One was a 65,600 and the other one was 128,000. Mm. Mm. So if you receive, you go there, you see if you print your purchases for the, for the month, mm. you see that amount there. Do you get me? Then you go to the history of those items. To, that will show you what came in at that time and how it has been used. Mm. But they have gone to a different report to print it, to come and compare with this one. And we are saying that it is not complete to do it that way. And you see, this one, the explanation can only be when we sit around the table and we show them how it is supposed to be. Mm. So that is how it goes. There is no money that has been short changed and there's no shortage. I see. So it means that all, all of the 194 sh uh, purchases that the pharmacy made yes. can be accounted for. Can be accounted for. I see. So Quite how about easy. the fact that we also told that uh, imports were not made in appropriate books? And, and let, me, let, me, let me just read from it. So, uh, accountants also failed to enter the transaction into the appropriate books, hence a discrepancy of 400 thousand six hundred and sixty three Ghana CDs and then we we have nine thousand ninety six thousand six hundred and thirty eight for 2012 and 2013 respectively according to the same report and so because ap appropriate uh, inputs were not done we had such discrepancies in, in, in our books How yeah, that there happen? are two different things they did not input mm. and the thing did not happen or money has been stolen you are we have there are some of these things okay. Mm. You have the documents there, you have the transactions mm. there. If it's not been input, it, it doesn't mean it's been stolen. Mm. And that is why the audit is for. And that is what, what, what verification and reconciliation I, is I, for. I, I get all that you're yes. saying, but why has it got to be that? The auditor has got a lot of things wrong with the operations at the pharmacy. It seems as though the auditor hasn't done well. It seems as though uh, the, uh, the discrepancies the auditor has observed, uh, according to you, are all false. They are false because I think that they have rushed through this report. Mm. They should just have taken time. We, as I've said, we are always audited, mm. and the auditors sit with us and thrash out, and then finally what is really should stay on the report stays and it goes, and mm. even goes to PAC. Mm. We haven't reached there. So for, so, some, for something like uh, the fact that accountants were not uh, inputting in appropriate books, you as director of pharmacy, how would you counter uh, what the auditors have observed in, in such an instance? This does not even come under my direct responsibility. Mm. As director of pharmacy, I'm, I have my area. Yes, the, I have my financial responsibility, but accounting books and all, they all come under the director of uh, finance. Mm. So the director of finance should be accountable to this. Mm. And, and in fact, this one is even new to me because mm. what I was given, this was not part of it. I see. Yes. I see. And, and, and so what now from here? The process isn't over. Yes, as I told you, I came here to set the record straight. Mm. There have been a lot of, I mean, we come way back from about two years ago mm. when the pharmacy department became a target. Mm. In fact, in one breath, they talk about the pharmacy department mm. as a cash cow of the hospital. In fact, we have done our best. Mm. There are so many projects around the hospital that monies from these operations mm. have come to finance. We haven't complained. And I must say that my staff, have always been on me that mm. we work and give the money out 
and deprive the department of a lot of things. Mm. In this same report, if you read along the line, you see that they said the manufacturing unit has been underutilized. Why has it been underutilized? It's been underutilized because we have our, we've designed our project, mm. we know what we want to do, but the money that we've generated, on average every year, over two million CDs is drawn from this small account, even not the department, to use by the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we've be, been deprived of the funds. Mm. Even when government does retooling, we are left out. Mm. So what should we do? Sister. But why have you always got to give all your money out to deprive your department of, of resources? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Mm. But we have been accused that we work like an our island within the hospital. I mean, an island within the hospital, how come that its money is, being, is mm. taken out completely? Mm. So you can see that our accusation mm. is neither here or there. We, our money, we know, is not for just pharmacy. Mm. Mm. Just like, you know, the hospital has two accounts, the mm. service account and the drug account. The drug account is supposed to be a revolving account mm. And it was made so, so that it will not be misapplied. Mm. And that the hospital will always have the drugs mm. available. Mm. That is how it, is, it's there. it was done. And in fact, the hospital was not even supposed to touch it. But through our own ingenuity, we decided that we should set up this 24-hour pharmacy, which has mm. become uh, the, uh, a monster on us. So that the money from there will be shared by the hospital mm. and the, the, the department. So you see, we have the two accounts. I see. The department's account is for everybody, and then the 24 account is where money from is used by the hospital. Mm. But m m Mrs. Mm. Bruce, I'm, I'm concerned about something. The fact yes. that for an auditor to come in yes. and make observations as this, it means that something could be wrong somewhere. I mean, you can't have your eyes everywhere. I'm not disputing it. At the end of the day, if we are able to trash out all the queries here, there may mm. be one or two that will stand on it. Mm. But it is not as massive as you, you it has think been this blown. is an exaggerated picture? It's, it's oh, a complete exaggeration. Mm. And, I, and I must also touch here. The board chairman has been on air every time not hesitating to say that we are resisting the audit. Mm. We have never resisted the audit. Mm. Yesterday I heard him clearly say, I, I refuse to let them go back to 2010. Mm. It is never true. It is never true. We have all our documents for the 24 hour pharmacy. We opened in 1996. We have all our documents there. Mm. It's a matter of time to move them out. Mm. So it is never true that we have resisted. We have everything. It's the way they've gone about it. Initially, this uh, auditor was supposed to come and audit us as a department. We resisted. We said that we have a clinical duties, responsibilities, and not clinical. As an accountant, he could only assess us or audit us on the non-clinical part mm. and not the clinical so as, part. at some point you resisted? We based resisted on that, on that mm. and not on the audit he was coming to do. Mm. So if he throws it out there that we were resisting this, his scoping mm. letter that was brought to us, that is not true. Mm. And I that see. is not true. And we will stand by it every time. So, so when are we going to see the next stage of the process uh, take place? Where you judge all with the auditor. Yes, but now the way it's been thrown out and even the government has been giving the impression that there's some massive corruption there. Mm. To the extent that government has um, contracted a private firm mm. to come and do an, uh, uh, how do you call it, a forensic audit. Mm. I don't know where, because I but, was but thinking you, you, that... You have nothing to fear, even if no, no, you're, no, no, you're no. bringing a PI. I'm not worried at all, mm. but you see... The way it's been thrown into the air, I hope there will be neutrality. Mm. I really hope that because if there is that neutrality on the part of the firm, they will see that, yes, there will be some procedural errors here and there, mm. but not corruption as they are portraying. I see. Thank you yes. very much, Elizabeth. No, well, Elizabeth oh, Bruce is yeah. director of uh, pharmacy at the Collingwood Teaching Hospital. Right, so that was the conversation between myself and Director of Pharmacy at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital over what 
uh, an interim forensic audit report had observed when it audited uh, the accounts of the pharmacy department. This is a document that was cited by Joy News. And we went into the conversation. She thinks that it was an exaggeration or it is an exaggeration of uh, the, the true picture. She thinks that uh, the auditors have been mischievous. She's unsure why the pharmacy uh, department is being victimized. But Solomon Nyantechi on Facebook is saying that confusion everywhere. Was it even necessary to uh, change Madam Aite, I still find it difficult to understand why Mahama is still struggling to perform because he is supposed to be the most experienced in terms of those associated with governance. And that's in relation to the, to the news that CEO Alfred, no, Albert Okpoti, uh, Reverend Albert Okpoti is being maintained at the hospital after he was sacked by uh, former Minister of Health, Sherry Aite. I'll go on with uh, Samuel Kwesi at the part of Fasi, who says, what are our leaders doing? Confused, God save Ghana. Manukre Kojo said, she says, the centre simply cannot hold. Bonti Benjamin from Achim Ebuakwa is saying, this is definitely a poor decision. And Atumpugre Andrews, did the president hear that? Oh, no problem. Our city will continue to fall if pragmatic, pra pragmatic measures are not taken. Abusa Jackson Jilanyo says, the new minister is bringing confusion to Kolibu. Uh, he doesn't, I, I don't get the rest, but I'm sure your point is well made. Melissa Benedicta Mallet says, we need a new minister of finance who will overturn Setepa's embargo on mechanization, which has caused workers employed as far back as 2012 to be living on loans. I see. Now, now our income pencil, Freeman, says corrupt on arrival, uh, minister, corrupt CEO in collaboration. I see. Could you mention a Sylvie says it sums up the current state of government, shambolic, chaotic, in the worst state of confusion. 90% of the appointees start off from the wrong angle. Shaka Ablo Franklin, do the NDC know what they are doing at all? A state of confusion. Now, while well, Lisa Hakukane who says, I am in utter shock and dismay by recent development in Ghana's premier hospital, Kolibu. There's so much display of partisan political power there. Mr. Eddie Yannan, uh, seems to be exercising so much unilateral powers in his capacity as board chair of the ho hospital. And this, in my humble view, can be inimical to the progress of our national tertiary referral uh, medical center. Without the benefit of Hansard, I'm scandalized, I'm further scandalized by the decision of the new minister to reinstate the former acting CEO of the hospital. We can only wait and watch how events unfold. Well, now, I, I, just, I just wrap it up with uh, Gaps and Guba, who's asking, is he implying the former minister did a bad job? He should make up that wisdom from the reports. And uh, I'll read a few more later on, uh, particularly uh, centered on this report uh, about the interim audit reports in, in a bit. I should just... Uh, I should just share them right now, uh, maybe. We've been asking uh, your views on this interim report that we've been, the Kolebu Teaching Hospital has been de deprived of 140,000 Ghana cities. In fact, close to 141,000 Ghana cities uh, meant for development projects. And I, I'll just read a few of your messages. I'll start off with Ranzi Elam Agbo, who says this can even pay your salaries. Ghana, we behave as if we do not know our problems. Bayam Suleyama Sule, Suleyma says, Why Ghana? Hopes are alive. More, more of them. Greetings to Latifa in Tamil. Really. Monty Benjamin, again, is saying, and yet the former CEO has been reinstated. I'll go on to John Kobe. What is happening in Ghana? We are in fear and panic. Uh, take it easy, Kobe. Nanayao Income Pencil says, Upon all these, this just... Uh, no, no, no. I, I don't get it. I'll move on to Michael Kwame Agbeze, who is saying, is it going to be just a paper report or action will be taken against those involved? If government fails to act, Shraj should act. 
or perhaps interesting comments there I agree and well I, I just we, we, we just want to wrap up uh, our conversation around Kolebu in the first half of the show. Now, the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, I, was, I told you at the beginning of the program uh, that it's also run out. The pharmacy department says that it is, it's run out of magnesium sulfate for treating pregnancy complications. The director of the department, in a conversation with me, told me that uh, they cannot provide the drugs for other health facilities that depend on them, except, of course, you have come to Kolebu and you need an emergency. Actually, that you are short of uh, some medicines oh. for uh, pregnant pregnancy complications. Yes, magnesium sulfate. It mm. is true. Mm. It is true, but it's a problem which is everywhere. Everybody is looking mm. for it. Mm. We need a particular drug. In fact, Kolebu has the capability to produce it, but we don't have the powder, mm. and it's so difficult to source for it. The few distributors that have the drug. There's so much demand for it because it's not only Kolebu. Mm. So the little we get, mm. we take. So then, so then w what happens now should someone need the market? We have our emergency stocks that we are using. Mm. We have not run out completely, mm. but we don't have it normally that anybody can get. For emergencies, we have. But we are still making the effort to mm. get for everybody. That we will not check our responsibility well, What on efforts are, are you making towards that? We have just gone through our procurement um, mm. exercise, mm. and one company has won. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's at the port, so we are waiting to receive it. Whilst we have made arrangement to import the powder directly to also produce locally mm. in the hospital to support. And we are looking forward to that future when we can produce magnesium sulfate locally to support uh, other hospitals and and our pregnant women, expecting mothers who may need them. On Facebook, that quote, Jacinta says, Lord have mercy on them. Mark Dahl says, God have mercy. Everybody's asking for that. Felix Amate Amanate says, why must we always run out of stock before pragmatic actions are taken? Jabizwa Arta says, and they called it the Better Ghana Agenda? McDonald's Badana Kut says, God have mercy on on Ghana, so our leaders will wake up. Oh, Ugbodo Michael says, the Lord is there. Yeah, he is. Florence Nightingale, Lord grants her heart's desire for her. It's not easy to be in that condition. I'm not sure what we're talking about, uh, Florence. I'm sure, I'm sure you got it all wrong. Henry Kofi Kazola says, please take care of them first before the demo. Fuseini Ibrahim, Abraham Obo says, God help us under this, uh, nope. Uh, nope. Uh, move on to Daniel Kombiok Jr. who says, This shows that the doctors have no one at heart and all they need is money and not save lives. God is watching them. Akbaribu Philip Apiga says, This is not politics. We have to blame the head of the medical stores. He's supposed to monitor the institution, the ins and outs of drugs, and not the president. So please, let's, lo let's watch who we blame. Savia Kofi Avonio, is, is it deliberate or lack of supervision? At least they could have topped up as soon as it reached the buffer level. And then Apia, Apia Marvin Gunn says, why shouldn't we blame the government if he has put tax on imported drugs and yet still he doesn't want to pay insurance bills? I'm thinking they are still owing supplies and this is never incompetence. I blame the government and the health insurance scheme. Gups and Guba is asking a simple question. What are the heads of departments doing? Well, Elizabeth says procurement is on its way. The head of pharmacy, procurement, and head of the... Well, she's answered your question. Gupson, I hope so. 